If your soil looks tired, crusty, lifeless, or simply refuses to grow anything impressive, this video is for you. So make sure you subscribe to Evergreen Garden YT and drop a comment below telling us what your soil struggles with most. Today, we're cutting through the noise and getting straight to what actually revives dead soil, not with expensive products or complicated compost systems, but with a lazy, genius approach that feeds microbes first and lets nature do the hard work for you. Dead soil is not actually dead, it is starving. What most gardeners call dead soil is really soil, where microbial life has collapsed due to compaction, chemical buildup, erosion or lack of organic inputs. Bacteria and fungi are the engines that unlock nutrients, build soil structure and regulate moisture. When they disappear, plants struggle, no matter how much fertilizer is added. Reviving soil starts by triggering microbial revival, not force-feeding plants. Sugars are the fastest ignition switch for microbial life. Microbes run on carbon and simple sugars are their quickest energy source. This is why molasses work so well in soil revival. Unsulfured blackstrap molasses contains sugars, iron, potassium and trace minerals that wake microbes almost instantly. A practical ratio is one tablespoon of molasses per gallon of water applied as a soil drench every two weeks. In severely degraded soil, this can be done weekly for the first month. You are not feeding plants here, you are jump-starting microbial metabolism. Proteins and nitrogen wake up bacterial colonies. Once microbes are awake, they need nitrogen to multiply. This is where protein-rich inputs come in. Fish hydrolysate, not fish emulsion, is ideal because it is enzymatically digested and still biologically active. A strong revival ratio is one tablespoon of fish hydrolysate per gallon of water combined with molasses. Apply directly to soil around plant roots or bare beds. In garden beds that have been abandoned or chemically farmed, applying this mix twice a month for six weeks produces visible improvement in soil smell, color and aggregation. Fungi need complex carbon, not quick sugar. Bacteria respond fast to sugars, but fungi require more complex materials. This is critical for long-term soil revival. Compost, leaf mold, wood chips and partially decomposed plant matter provide lignin and cellulose that fungi thrive on. A lazy but effective method is spreading a two-inch layer of finished compost or leaf mold on the soil surface and letting watering and organisms pull it down naturally. No digging is required. For fungal dominant soils like vegetable beds transitioning to perennials, adding wood chips as surface mulch accelerates mycorrhizal networks. Microbial diversity really explodes when minerals are present, you know. Microbes simply cannot function without minerals. Now, dead soil is often depleted of things like calcium, magnesium, iron, and a whole suite of trace elements. Rock dusts, such as basalt or granite dust, provide slow-release minerals that microbes use as cofactors in enzymatic reactions. A practical application rate is about two to four cups of rock dust per 10 square feet of soil, applied once or twice per year. Watering afterward helps microbes access these minerals without disturbing soil structure. Water is the delivery system here, not just moisture. Microbial revival fails if the soil stays waterlogged or bone dry, so microbes need oxygen and moisture in balance. The lazy genius approach, honestly, is deep infrequent watering that penetrates six to eight inches into the soil. This encourages microbes to colonize deeper layers rather than just hanging about on the surface. In compacted soil, adding organic matter first and watering slowly prevents runoff and creates pore spaces where microbes can actually breathe. Living roots are the ultimate microbial food source. Nothing truly feeds soil life better than living plants. Roots exude sugars, amino acids, and enzymes directly into the soil, creating microbial hotspots. Cover crops are one of the fastest ways to revive dead soil without much effort at all. 
Even a simple mix of cowpeas or clover can dramatically increase microbial biomass. For small gardens, allowing volunteer plants or low-growing greens to remain between crops keeps microbial populations alive year-round. Chemical fertilizers suppress microbial partnerships, and one reason soil stays dead is the repeated use of synthetic fertilizers and pesticides. These bypass microbial nutrient cycling and eventually reduce microbial diversity. Transitioning doesn't mean abandoning productivity. It means gradually replacing salts with biological inputs. For example, instead of granular fertilizer, use compost tea made from one cup of compost, one tablespoon of molasses, and one tablespoon of fish, hydrolysate per gallon of water, brewed or simply mixed and applied immediately to the soil. Thyme is the final ingredient that most gardeners, well, underestimate. Microbial revival is fast compared to rebuilding soil physically, but it is still a process. Within two weeks, soil begins to smell earthy again. Within one month, structure improves. Within one season, water retention and plant health change dramatically. The lazy genius method works because it supports biology consistently, rather than shocking the soil with aggressive interventions. If this guide helped you understand what truly revives dead soil and how to do it simply, subscribe to Evergreen Garden YT for more real, no-nonsense gardening knowledge. Share this video with a fellow gardener who keeps fighting their soil instead of fixing it and leave a comment below telling us what ingredient you're excited to try first.